everybody. Welcome to Growth Group Week 7. We've had an amazing journey these last seven weeks in growth groups, studying Pastor Sean's sermon series titled In the Craftsman's Hands. And we've been looking at how God is the master craftsman in our lives, and he's forming us and shaping us and molding us to be more like him. Well, this past Sunday, I preached a message entitled Brushstrokes. And in that message, I talked about how God takes the mistakes of our past and he paints a new picture with whatever we have given him from our life experiences, our background, our mistakes, our sins, and he turns it into something that he can use for his glory. The scripture that I started with was from 2 Corinthians 1, 3 through 4. And that scripture talks about how God is our comforter and how he wants to comfort us in all the troubles we've experienced so that we can be a comfort to others. So I want to start off by just reading that verse once again to provide a background for what I'm going to talk about today. It says, Praise be to the God and Father of our Lord Jesus Christ, the Father of compassion and the God of all comfort, who comforts us in our troubles so that we can comfort those in any trouble with the comfort we ourselves receive from God. That passage is saying that God is the father of compassion and the father of all comfort. And as we looked at the story of the prodigal son, we saw how the son who made mistakes and sinned was received back by his father, forgiven and loved. And we looked at the brushstrokes of each of the characters in that story and how the story they were painting themselves would have turned out like a mess, but because God was in that story, it turned out much differently. The son was painting a story of failure, but it turned into a story of forgiveness. The father's story was one of hurt, but it turned into a story of healing. And the older son was angry. Now, we don't know what happened to the older son. It doesn't tell us how his story ended, but we do learn that God can take our anger and he can turn it into a story of amazing grace. When we are holding the brush in our hands and we are trying to be in control all the time of our story, we're going to paint a picture of our lives that is very messy. But when we hand the brush over to the master painter, the one who created us, he takes our mess and turns it into a masterpiece. Recently, we had a paint event at the church for the women, and I am not a painter at all. So when we got started and we were given the instructions, I accidentally followed the instructions for a different painting, and my own painting got completely messed up. I think I was the only person in that room who messed up her whole painting within the first 10 minutes. And the instructor, Neethi, came over to me and she said, don't worry, we prepared for that. Go over to this section of the room and there's hair dryers and we want you to blow your painting dry and when it's dry we'll start over. Well instead of giving me a brand new blank canvas which is what I was hoping for she had me go and blow dry my mistakes and when I started over the second time I was pretty amazed that when the mixture of the new paint mixed with the old dried paint it made the background color even more amazing than I had intended it to be in the first place. Some people even came over to me and said, how did you get those colors? And I didn't know because I had mixed the old mistakes with the new. And I know you're all curious about how that turned out. And I told you I'm not a painter, but I do want to show you, you know, these are the sunset colors that came out of that mistake. But that's what God does for us as well. God is patient with us when we make mistakes. He allows us to experience consequences for sure, but he will also take our trials and turn them into a testimony. So nothing we have been through in our life is wasted. The experience of the prodigal son was not wasted because it humbled him and it led him back to his father. God takes our background mistakes and he makes something beautiful out of them. The purpose of our pain, the purpose of our backgrounds, is so that we can do what Paul says in verse 4. We can comfort those in any trouble with the comfort that we ourselves have received from God. God wants to use our experiences for His glory. He wants to use our pain to bring other people to Him. And as we receive grace, then we can extend that grace to other people. He takes our background and uses it to lead other people to Him. Now, there's countless stories in the Bible of other people that he's done this with. Just to give you a few examples, one would be Paul. 
Paul took his knowledge of the law, his background that he used to persecute believers because he knew more about the law than anybody. And he could reach the Pharisees and the Jews with that knowledge of the law once he turned his life over to Christ. So God used even his messed up background of persecuting believers to end up leading people to Christ. Esther is someone that you're probably familiar with from the Old Testament. Esther was a Jewish girl who was taken into the kingdom and trained to be a, a queen. And as she became that queen, her identity was hidden until the proper time when the Jews were going to be exterminated. And God used her background as a, a Jewish girl to save the lives of the Jewish people. Job was another uh, person in the Bible who had uh, just a, a horrible story. He lost everything he had and everyone he loved. And at the end of Job, we read that God restored to him double what he had before. And then the last example I'll leave you with today is David. David, you know, grew up as a shepherd boy. And God took his training as a little shepherd boy and used those leadership skills to teach him how to be one of the greatest kings who ever lived. David also made many moral mistakes as king, and God used those in his life as well to teach him humility and service and repentance. And now we can learn from his life as well. Whatever your own background is, God can use it for his glory. I want to go a little deeper and look at 2 Corinthians 1, 5 through 7. We had just read verses 3 and 4. And verses 5 through 7 say, Just as the sufferings of Christ flow over into our lives, so also through Christ our comfort overflows. If we are distressed, it is for your comfort and salvation. I want to stop there for a moment and say that Paul was writing this to believers who were going through severe persecution at the time. The sufferings of Christ that he's talking about are things that we experience as we serve Christ, as we do his ministry. We will experience persecution and troubles and hardship. And Paul is telling these believers that God will comfort you in those sufferings you experience so that you can comfort other people as well. Going on, it says, if we are comforted, it is for your comfort, which produced in you patient endurance of the same sufferings we suffer. Our hope for you is firm because we know that just as you share in our sufferings, so also you share in our comfort. So all of us are going to experience hardship in our lives in different ways. For these early believers, it was common for them to be persecuted in their faith. Uh, we are very blessed to live in a free country where most of us have not been persecuted for our faith. But sometimes we can be persecuted for doing the right thing, as Pastor Sean shared about last Sunday. Maybe you speak up for what is right, or you tell the truth because you're doing what God wants you to do, and then you suffer repercussions from that. I think the closest thing in America that we have experienced to persecution would be discrimination. Um, perhaps you've been targeted for not only your beliefs, but maybe for the color of your skin or for your ethnicity, um, even for your gender. We are challenged by this verse to comfort one another in our struggles, to share our stories with one another, to bear one another's burdens. The Life Application Bible says we must understand that being comforted can also re can also mean receiving strength, encouragement, and hope to deal with our troubles. The more we suffer, the more comfort God gives us. Remember that every trial you endure will help you comfort other people who are suffering similar troubles. When we partake in Christ's suffering, we can experience his comfort because he's really the only one who can truly understand it. He fully understands persecution, betrayal, physical pain, relational pain, all of it. No matter what our hurt is and what our background story is, God can heal us and he can comfort us. Verse 6 says that this produces in us patient endurance. That has been a theme lately in many of our growth group discussions, that everything we go through has purpose. The purpose is to make us more like Christ. When we share in Christ's suffering, we become more like him. God will comfort us in our troubles. In the story of the prodigal son, the father showed compassion on his son. He ran to him. He held him. He comforted him, even though the son didn't deserve it. 
When we comfort others with that love of Christ, it can lead them back to Christ. We have people all around us who are suffering in so many different ways. Ask God to reveal to you the suffering going on around you, to open your eyes to it so that you can reach out and extend to them the love and compassion of Christ. Today in your growth group, you're going to look closer at the Greek meaning behind that word comforter. And we're going to look at how it relates to the Holy Spirit, who is also called our comforter. I want you also to look deeper at a few people in the Bible about how their background story was used by God to transform lives. I hope that you have enjoyed this session of growth groups. We're going to be taking a break for the summer and gathering back together in September in the fall. But I really encourage all of you to make an effort to stay in touch with one another, to plan maybe an event or two, make sure you do your service project together and stay connected with one another. We want these growth groups to continue and to start back up again in the fall. And we really hope and pray that you will be a part of that. Enjoy your discussion and thank you for allowing me the opportunity to share with you today.